Welcome to Advanced Training for Salesmore POS. In this video, I'll be showing you four more things that will help you use Salesmore POS to run your store more efficiently. The first is going to be repairs. Maybe you have, maybe you are a repair shop or you have a repair section in your store. You can use the repair module to create tickets and keep track of these repairs. In order to start a repair, go up to new and then repair. Enter the customer's name. The item they're going to be repairing. The IMEI in order to keep track of this item. If they have a password, you can enter that here. And at the bottom, you can enter repair notes. For example, screen not turning on. You can notice that it does power on and it has some water damage. And you have other conditions you can also enable. On the right hand side, you can enter the payment information. Maybe you're going to be charging them a diagnosis fee for this repair. Just to check it, we're going to charge $10. And the entire repair is going to be 100 If you want to turn off and on tax, you can do so here. And if the customer is leaving some kind of deposit, let's say she's leaving $50, you can enter that here. And in order to finish, click Save. Let's choose the representative who's making this repair. And let's check out this customer. Now let's enter another repair. We're going up to new, repair, enter the customer's name, the item they're going to be repairing. This Samsung S5 does not exist, so let's go ahead and create this item. The category is going to be under repair, and we're going to apply tax to this repair. Press save. And now we can go ahead and enter the IMEI number. It doesn't have a password, but it does have a pattern, so that we can go ahead and click pattern and enter the pattern. Maybe we're not going to have a diagnosis fee, so I just enter the repair price. And the customer will be paying off the entire thing now. So we can go ahead and enter $50 and let's turn off tax. We also know this customer, so let's go ahead and give this customer a phone that they can use while we're repairing their phone. We can do that by going up here and say give loaner phone. And then here we can enter the IMEI and some more information on that phone we gave him. This way when they come back, we know exactly what phone we gave him. At the bottom by default, there's going to be two repair receipts. One is an item receipt that's for yourself. You can wrap it around the phone or a customer receipt that you will give to the customer. You also have the option to email them the receipt. Let's go ahead and click save. Choose the user making the sale and let's say this customer is paying with credit card so let's enter this with credit card and press save if you'd like to view the repairs or edit them or close them you would go up here where it says list and then repairs Here we can see all the repairs that we've made. Some are in progress. Some haven't been closed, but they've already been said that they can't fix or they've been fixed. Let's choose this one right here. It's Kelly. We were fixing ACCG2. We have all the information here. 
let's say this phone was not fixed we would go ahead and can't fix and then click on return not fixed and this customer if they left any type of deposit uh, which they haven't they would automatically be refunded this cash if the item was fixed we would go ahead and click fixed and then we have three options we can choose from we have no no expense meaning we didn't spend any cash in order to uh, repair this item so we would we can go ahead and click on no expense and check out this customer for the actual repair price if we used anything from our inventory we would go ahead and click on inventory usage we would go ahead and enter the item that we used let's say we used an LCD and we currently have this LCD priced under $65 but the repair price costs 40 so we're gonna to have to change the price of this item this repair part to match the price of the repair let's turn off the tax and now we can go ahead and check out this customer the last option is third party with third party you can enter a vendor's name and how much you paid for the repair maybe you send out this phone to another repair shop and then they charge you and then you're gonna pass on that cost to the customer you would enter the, the vendor's name how much cost you if you paid it or not and then you can go ahead and check out the customer for this repair we had no expense so let's go ahead and click on no expense check out save the transaction In order to review our closed repairs, we can go to repair status, toggle this, and then here we can see all the repairs that have been fixed and can't fixed, but they've been closed. You also have the option to reopen this repair if it was opened within that shift. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a layaway ticket. Maybe you have customers who come into your store, they want to reserve a phone or just reserve a product um, and pay it off slowly. And then when they pay it off completely, then you can go ahead and give them that phone or any item. In order to start this, let's go up to new and then layaway. Enter the customer's name. And the item they're going to be putting on layaway. Say the price is going to be 700 and add that to that invoice maybe they're also buying a charger at the bottom you'll be able to see their total by default the pay it now amount is going to be 10 percent of the balance but we can go ahead and change this maybe they're going to be putting 500 that they have now and we can go ahead and save this ticket are you sure you received the first payment payment let's say yes and let's check this customer out Now that a layaway ticket has been created, we can go ahead and view it by going up to list of layaways. And here at the bottom, we can see the layaway we just made. If the customer is going to come back to pay a little bit more, we will click on the dollar sign and enter the amount they're gonna be paying. They have a balance left of $290.20. Let's say they're gonna be paying it off now. We will go ahead and click save and check this customer out. In order to fully remove the items from the inventory and make sure they've, they've been delivered to the customer, 
you would go ahead and click on the deliver icon. For the iPhone, we would enter the serial number that we're going to be giving them. And for the charger, we wouldn't be entering anything. And then we would go ahead and click save. If the customer for some reason wants to have a complete refund, then we also have the option to refund them the cash. They've already paid. Next, I'm going to show you how to create expenses. By creating expenses, you can keep track of the cash flow in your store. Not only the cash coming in, but also the cash going out. Maybe you have someone who comes to clean your windows, or rent, or the light bills. These are expenses you want to keep track of, and want to be able to have reports on. In order to track every expense, go up to New, and then Expense. First, select the payee name. If you don't see any of the payee names here, you can go ahead and click on the create pay icon on the right. Enter the pay pay's name. Let's say it's going to be light bill. Let's select light bill from the list and we can enter the amount. You're going to enter any notes here and then go ahead and click save. If the cash that you're using to make this payment is from the register, you would enter into register amount. Otherwise, you would put into previous. Let's say we used a checkbook and the money did not come from the register. So let's put it as previous amount and click save. Now, if we go to list of expenses, we can see here that we have an expense of $200 by which employee, for what payee, at what time, and what date. And in our reports for the month, we'll be able to see that we spent $200 on a light bill. Now let's go ahead and create another expense, but let's pay with the register, with cash from the register. Let's say we're going to discount store. We bought some, some paper towels. And let's say we just wasted five bucks in general and let's click save and it's coming out the register. Let's go back to list of expenses and we'll be able to see here. Since the cash was taken out the register, it will be when we go ahead and close our day. In cash spent, you'll be able to see here store expenses, $5, total money spent, $5. We spent $205 in total, but these $5 were taken out the register. So this is part of the shift. The other $200 is part of the month. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to buy and sell used phones. Because used phones are bought at different prices and they, they're sold for different prices, we keep them separate in, the, in your inventory. In order to buy a used phone, go up to new and then buy used item. Since a phone is usually bought from a customer, we can go ahead and enter a customer's name. The item that we're going to be buying, let's say they have an HTC One. And this product does not exist in our used item list. So let's go ahead and create it. The product category is going to be used item. And we are now going to apply tax and let's click save. They're setting it as for 200 and we're planning to sell it for 300. Let's enter the IME eye of this phone. And add it to the invoice. Once I'm done, I can go, I have the option to print a label. If I have a Dymo label printer that's supported by Salesmart POS, and the label will show the name, the cost, and, and more information. Let's go ahead and save this. If we're not using money from the, from the register, we would enter in previous and click save.
And now that phone is in our inventory. To make sure we can go to list and then use item. Let's sort this by date. And at the top, you can see the phone that we just bought. In order to sell the item, you also have the option from right here to add it to running invoice. Or you can take the IMEI and add it in the dashboard. We can check out and, and sell this item. And that's how you buy and sell used items. As in our last video, I would like to remind you of our tutorials and help module up here on the top where it says tutorials and help. You'll be able to see videos and articles on many other things in software that would help you use Salesmart much better. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in our next training video.